Hello, YouTube. Well, good morning, YouTube. Arizona RE here. Riding on the nice side of town. Tucson East Side. If you don't believe me, and take a look at some of those houses up on that hill right there. That's how you know you're in the fancy neighborhoods. They got a hill all to themselves, and they live on roads you can't get to. <laughs> ah, look at that. Wow. <laughs> so that's Mount Lemmon, um, the Catalina Mountains, uh, where you saw myself and Arizona Desert Dog head up there. That, that's the mountain we climbed. And this is Ventana Canyon just down below it. I should say, this is the Ventana Canyon neighborhood area. Ventana Canyon is actually that box canyon that's way off in the distance there. You're not going to be able to see on the GoPro. Alright, what kind of contraption is this? Wow. It was like a bicycle that was also a stair climber? Wow. I really, I came out with zero topics this morning. Zero topics, nothing pre can Oh, what a beautiful dog. Beautiful dog. <laughs> he would have come after me if it hadn't been on a leash. He was interested. He was really interested. <laughs> but beautiful dog. I right, see now that reminds me of my pooch. The golf course right over there. Look at these houses, man. Mm-hmm. Lowe's Ventana Canyon Resort. Yeah. So yeah, along the line of dogs, I had one of the greatest dogs ever in the history of dog ownership. I ain't gonna lie. I know that's completely biased, but I don't care. She's a great dog. I'm still sad about it. It's been almost three years since her death, and I can still work myself up about it. She is a great pooch. We got her as a puppy. She's a Belgian Malinois. And um, it's funny, when we got her as a puppy, she had one ear that just wouldn't stand up. The other ear was always perky. The other ear just kind of dipped down at the top, kind of flopped over. Unless she was really, really interested in something in them. Boing, it popped right back up. And her tail, her tail was pretty long, but a lot of times it would just curl up. <laughs> so it looked like a giant circle, like she was carrying a hairy hula hoop behind her all the time. Uh, you know, later on, it became known as the fart fan or the pooter pusher because, uh, you know, Dogs pass gas and they don't think anything about it, and then they uh, they wave their tail around, all proud as can be. <laughs> anyway, she was a great dog, and my wife and I had picked her up as a puppy before we had kids. And uh, you know, for those of you that have had kids, you may remember, and for those of you that hadn't, uh, yeah, you certainly know, like you likely know how you can dole the affection uh, to a pet. In lieu of having children and stuff, you, you really sort of adopt pets as your as your kids. I mean, they're your family, you know. And our dog was always our family. She slept indoors. Uh, you know, we I had a rule, no sleeping on furniture or anything like that. She's a big dog. If you look up the breed, Belgian Malinois, they're basically small shepherds. And, um, and we had a rule, you know, no furniture. So she was good about that, but... I mean, we went through a painstaking process of training her, and we had her absolutely trained. She was trained to hand signals, and regardless of the Malinois' inherent need to hunt and the Malinois' inherent energy drive, um, I, I used to take her out without a leash, and man, if um, when we lived out in Texas, out in the country, and, you know, at one time she took off after a, a herd of deer, uh, there was probably, I don't know, 25, 30 deer in my in my backyard. I, I, I damn near had a pecan orchard in my backyard at one time. 
Uh, there are more than a dozen pecan trees and huge ones too. And so the deer would come into our yard at night and they would, I, I believe it or not, man, they were smart. They, they would stomp on the, on the pecans that had dropped to the ground and then nibble on them. So they'd crack them by stomping on them and then nibble on them. So anyway, we, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so I had her outside one morning and she took off after those deer and I, I mean she took off she was tossing up chunks of ground behind her like a racehorse that's how she took off and I thought for sure man I was like yeah no nope, I've lost her she's she's gone she ain't coming back until she's run herself out but I bellowed at her I hollered at her and her training had set in with her so well that I was able to call her off of a flat, full-on charge after those deer. <clears throat> I mean, just like that. And man, she just flat off stopped. She looked back at me. You can see, you know, she sort of tilted her head and looked back at me and was like, really? <laughs> She's like, are you kidding me? They're right there. <laughs> Who the heck did this light turn green for? There ain't nobody here. I was probably enjoying my ride too much. Just have put the sop on me, I guess. I don't know. So, you know, she looked back at me, but she was a really athletic dog. And the, the Malinois are. And so to help her burn off some of her energy, uh, we used to throw frisbees for her. And she was a fantastic frisbee dog. You could do, you could throw one and then immediately throw a second one. She'd track down the first one, snatch it, throw it down, jump up and, and snatch the second one. And she was really good. Now, I'm right about six foot tall. And I could hold that thing, I could hold that frisbee way up over my head, you know, alongside me, not directly over my head, but hold it up, like, you know, think Statue of Liberty. And she could jump up and grab it without running to go get it either. I mean, she could just boing right off the ground. She had like kangaroo legs underneath her. Just fantastic dog, man. <laughs> just enjoyed so many good years with her. And like I said, we had her before we had my kids. So, you know, we connected with her for almost three years before we had our, uh, our first son. So my kids had always known her and always grew up with her. And so, you know, it, when I think of dogs and stuff, I always think about her. I haven't had the heart to get another dog. Uh, I kind of knew when she was getting older and I'd mentioned to my wife, I was like, you know, we should go ahead and pick up another dog. For one thing, maybe she could transmit some of her own behaviors some of her good behaviors over to the to the new puppy um, but that way too you know when she passes on we, we we have another dog and we talked about it talked about it, and we just never did it and when she got on an age and and died finally um, that was um, that was one of those things now I'm just I'm reluctant to commit uh, to having another dog like that again and I know I'm probably um, depriving myself and my children of of that of that love and that affection that you can only get from a, a really good family pet but I'm still heartbroken about it you know you don't just repel a member of the family and uh, it's kind of hard to kind of hard for me to pull myself together for that oh but man uh, so the Belgium Allen walls they're used for police dogs right uh, more common than not they're like drug sniffing or they're uh, they're a lot of times Germany will use them for bite dogs because uh, because they are really fast and they can jump. <laughs> uh, and the, them being a smaller shepherd, uh, they don't tend to have those those hip problems that uh, that full blood German shepherds have. 
so they're you know in the eyes of uh, law enforcement they're a better investment because you get more work years out of them before they become uh, arthritic and, and can't really move too well so I mean she just she had that what they call uh, an alpha dogs they call it a prey drive which means their drive to go after something and how great that is determines how good of a police dog they're going to be are they driven to the point that they will sacrifice themselves if they're told to to go do something and that that's called a prey drive and she had a very strong prey drive and and i will demonstrate that for you here well i won't demonstrate it but i'll tell you about it a, a demonstration of it and so everything was a game of fetch with her uh whether it's the frisbees that's what she loved the most because the frisbees would float and she could get some air and i mean she looked like a 10 pound bass on a on a hook man when she came up like a like one of them coming up out of the water and they sort of you know twist and bend and that's what she looked like when she was snatching those frisbees out of the air but uh i'll give you an example so again we were living out in the country and and we had we shared one fence along the property um with a pasture and the person who owned that pasture had uh, had a bunch of horses and the horses would always come over and scrape against the fence scratch themselves and we'd go out there occasionally and give them carrots they were beautiful animals themselves well so she had a habit sometimes of bringing you toys when you didn't want them <laughs> right all good fetch dogs do they bring you toys when you're not ready for them so if you were standing outside and she wanted to play she'd bring you a stick or she'd bring you we used to get her these rubber circles which call a circle face all the time because she'd walk around with that thing she'd look like a door knocker because uh, she always had it in her mouth so we always called her circle face and uh, <laughs> she would she would come up and if you were doing something outside talking to someone or maybe working on the car or anything she'd come over she'd drop it well after she had had it in her mouth quite a few times and it had hit the ground a couple times of course it's all slimy and covered with slobber and dirt and eventually mud because of how much slobber is on it <laughs> <laughs> so she'd come over and drop it on you and there was this one toy she had that was particularly gnarly she had busted open a tennis ball right so she had punctured it with her teeth but she still loved that stupid thing that stupid tennis ball and I mean it was a scrap of a tennis ball when I say ball it's in the loosest sense because two thirds of it had been gnawed off I mean it was flat on one side you can see right through it and she, but she loved that stupid chunk of tennis ball so I got tired of her dropping it on me and she'd drop it on my shoes she'd drop it on my work clothes when I was getting ready for work and of course it'd slime everything up and you know I didn't have the heart to just yell at her about it and I didn't want to turn her off of playing so you know when she went inside one day she while she was inside she'd get a drink of water laying down and and just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing I slipped outside and I picked up that tennis ball and I threw it with all my might out into the pasture I was like there done now I don't have to see that stupid thing again I was an idiot so I go to work and uh, later that evening my wife calls me she says hey I've got to take Haley to the vet I got to take her I was like what's up she says she has a she has a gash on her on her abdomen like cut right open I mean you know my wife said she could see right inside of her I was like holy crap how'd that happen she said I don't know I don't know she goes but she came to the back door and she was bleeding and she's acting like she's not even in any pain but it needs to be taken care of okay well so she she hauled Haley to the hospital and uh, by the time I got home uh, Haley was back had the stitches and you know had the cone of shame so she wouldn't chomp at him and you know she seemed no worse for the wear except for you know a, a row of stitches up the middle of her abdomen 
and she liked to gut herself on something. So I go outside the next morning trying to figure out what she cut herself open on. And I'm looking around and what is laying right next to the back door? You got it. That chunk of tennis ball is laying right next to the back door. So she had jumped over a five and a half foot tall chain link fence and jumped over a barbed wire fence or through it because that's how she cut herself. Went out and found that damn ball. Then came back and I saw a little tuft of skin on top of one of the barbs on the barbed wire fence that was south of our fence. I just could not believe it. I was like, wow, she was really committed to that stupid tennis ball. So, yeah, needless to say, I was stupid. I, I shouldn't have chunked her toy out where she could smell it still and go get it. Because that's what it was. She used her sense of smell to track that thing down. Unbelievable. Dogs are insane. <laughs> but, yeah. Her play drive... <clears throat> well... When they use these dogs for law enforcement, they call it prey drive. I always called it play drive because she was driven to play. She always wanted to play. Dude, that guy ran right through that red light. The light was totally red for that direction. So yeah, that's a little demonstration of their play drive. Man, she was such a great dog. Bird, come on bird, move. <laughs> Man, why do birds sleep in the middle of the road? Why do they do that? 